What's going on my fellow Jedi and Padawans? Welcome back to another Jedi Gaming video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel and if you guys are new, welcome, welcome. You guys are crazy for all the support lately. I hope the videos have been fun for you. Please let me know down below what I can change up if anything, if they're getting stagnant or boring. I don't want to cause you guys to watch the same stuff over and over again. So if you guys think of anything you guys want to see or need help with, anything like that, just put it in the comments and I'll try to make a video on it. So I just really appreciate you guys. I want to help you guys out as much as I possibly can. So let's get into today's video, which is about the new Nightfall this week, The Proving Ground. And let me tell you, it is crazy. Now, I will preface this right now, which I, I have not completed the Grand Master yet, and because I've heard it's really, really crazy, and I don't have enough friends that play to play with a consistent fire team to go through that Grand Master right now. But I have done the Master and the Legend just to kind of get a feel for what it's going to be like. And this video is going to be about those two, or just about the normal Nightfall in general, not about the Grandmaster, because that's a whole different beast, and I have to go through it and totally get that done for you guys. And so I can get a handle on that myself, and then put out a video for you guys later down the road. Like Bungie said, in 20 days on April 20th, on that reset on Tuesday, all the Grandmasters are coming out, so by then I will for sure have completed it and get a guide produced. So... Let's get into the normal Nightfall, though. Lots of enemy, lots of ball. Fall. So, you are going to be dealing with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, and then also every single Solar Arc and Void Burn within this strike. So, make sure your fire team is loaded, at least with one person with each type of burn, whether it's a you know, energy weapon or a heavy that can break some of these shields. And I will say void is the most needed, followed by solar. And then there's a couple arcs here and there that pop up randomly. So not as important, but definitely needed. So for the loadout that I was using, I used two different loadouts. One, I used the succession sniper with the last perdition void pulse rifle and then anarchy. And then my other loadout, I was using Outbreak Perfected, actually. The Frozen Orbit Sniper, which is Void. And then the Swarm, which is an Arc LMG. To complement those, I used Unstoppable Pulse, obviously, for the Last Perdition and the Outbreak Perfected. And then Anti-Barrier Sniper for both the Succession and the Frozen Orbit. This seemed to work very well for me, especially in these lower levels, because you can deal with two different types of burns and take down those shields and then also you're dealing with both the champions and can put out a decent amount of damage especially with anarchy you can just plop it on the enemy and then run away if necessary you got to be a little bit more in their face and aggressive with the swarm but it still does a decent amount of damage even in the master so let's get into the strike the first open area is pretty easy in all seriousness you can stay to the left side up on that ridge and deal with enemies up there if you're having trouble with dying but you can just go right up the gut and wipe out enemies as you go you will run into a barrier and unstoppable in that first little area so that's not too bad but before you go into the tank you have to kill the yellow bar cabal and once he loses half of his health that solar shield kind of pops up in a dome around him and he goes immune and you have to shoot the little center charge that's creating the dome so there's a couple of different ways you can go invisible or go in there and hit it or there is a cheese where you can use the sky burners oath but you have to make sure you don't have anti-barrier rounds on and then you can shoot through that solar shield and destroy that center core but it's really not that bad if you just walk in and snipe it or just use a couple anarchy ticks on it it'll go away pretty fast and even in the master it's not that bad you just got to watch out for knockback damage because that is increased and if he hits you I, and there's a lot of little rocks and corners that you can just bounce off of it'll kill you super super fast so first area pretty easy the next area with the tanks is decently challenging just because there's interceptors in there that hit super hard there's two tanks and there's a couple barriers and unstoppables once you get all the ads summoned and then the second round comes out with the tanks 
So a good spot that I found to sit is in this back left corner or just in the back in general. You can use these big flaps to deflect or to block damage, especially from the tanks and the champions. I would suggest dealing with the champions first if possible because they hit so, so hard and the other enemies are very easy to deal with in my opinion. You can wipe them out a lot faster than the champions. And like I said, everything in this strike hits super hard at the higher levels. So it's very important to take out those high level enemies as soon as you possibly can. So this room, you just basically stay in the back on that little walkway going left and right and just wipe out enemies as you go. But like I said, it's so, so important to just chill in the back, take it slow, but make sure you're wiping out those tanks and champions first because you don't want to miss a champion and miss out on those platinum rewards. Next, we have where you got to deposit the two charges in the middle room on the underbelly of the tank. Pretty easy overall in all seriousness. Just make sure whenever a door opens, you stand back from it because there will be champions and gladiators on the other side. So if you push in, you're going to die immediately. So just play it a little safe. Let the enemies kind of spawn and deal damage from the other side of the door. Super nice, super easy. And make sure you are watching for the turrets in this area because they kind of in little cheeky corners and they will absolutely melt your entire fire team without even noticing what happened so make sure you're shooting those in these rooms and besides that this bottom area might be the easiest besides the first area just because the enemies do kind of come together and it's really not that bad they don't aggro too hard and if you guys stand there in a well or a bubble with helm of saint 14 it disorients the enemies and you can just deal with them pretty easily even at the master level now, this is where it gets kind of challenging, the boss room. And let me start out by saying, use your super before you get to the boss room, no matter what, because once you get to the boss room and you activate that center pillar, it gives you your super back, just like in the battlegrounds. So no worries about if you don't have your super or saving it going into the boss room, you will get it back when you start the boss encounter. Now there's a couple different cheeses and stuff that I've heard about doing, but I'm just gonna talk about how we did it and did it legitly. So I had a chaos with me on one run. I had a tether on one run, and then I was running Ursa Furiosa. That was through for my masters and it seemed to work very well. Escapability in that final room is super important. One person focuses on shooting the solar balls that the boss sends out. And then the other two are add clear and damage basically for the time. So the person with Ursa can block all of those and just get heck of a lot of orbs. Well, the other two can do DPS and add clear for sure. So it is a very, very good set of supers to use throughout this strike. And that's pretty much how to deal with this final room. You sit in that, like where you first fall into it and there's some uh, flaps again that can protect you from damage. So that is very important there. And then next, once you hit that first uh, immune phase, champions will spawn. So I would suggest dealing with every single champion before you break the shield and start this next damage phase because it gets hectic. And when there's a champion and the boss inside of that solar dome, it's almost impossible to break the little uh, crystal in the middle that breaks the shield. So when you enter those damage phases or the immune phases, I should say, make sure you're killing the adds and the champions first because it makes it so, so much easier in the end. And let me tell you that, like I said, that Ursa Furiosa with the Titan or like a bubble and a well is perfect. You can chain supers, you can protect yourself, and it is super, super helpful. But hopefully this helps you guys out and you guys can start grinding out those palindromes because we got double the drops this week it's insane and i am super excited to get some god rolls so thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one peace